In this video, we are going to look at classifying stars. We're going to think about what the colours of stars tell us about them, how we can classify or sort stars by their physical characteristics, and what we can tell about stars from their absorption spectra. Now, when you look at the night sky, especially with a telescope, you don't just see one colour of stars. We've got red stars, orange stars, yellow stars, blue stars, white stars, and all those different colours tell us something fundamentally important about those stars. If we think back to the chemistry lab, and you think back to using a Bunsen burner, then when you first start using it, you have the whole of the Bunsen burner closed, <coughs> if you think back to using a Bunsen burner in the chemistry lab, then there are different flames that you can use for different purposes. You start off with the hole closed and with the safety flame, this yellowish one. And then, as you open up the hole and allow more air to be drawn in, you get more complete combustion, so you get the blue roaring flame. The hottest of those flames is the blue flame, and so we can see that there is a relationship between the colour and the temperature. And this is the same for stars. So going back to our flame, what wavelength is it mainly emitting at? Well, it's yellow, and so we can tell that it's emitting a large amount of visible light. There's a bit of orange in there, but it's peaking at 590 nanometers yellow light. But if you put your hand near it, you'd be able to feel the heat, the infrared. So we know it must also be emitting infrared radiation. And in fact, it's emitting radiation at a range of different wavelengths, but peaking in the yellow. We can imagine the same with a filament light bulb. This is a slow motion footage of a light bulb being turned on. And when you flick the switch, as the current runs through the filament, as the electrons run through, resistive heating causes it to get warm and it starts to glow, first red, then yellow, and then through to white. And if we could imagine this, but viewing the wavelength that it's emitting at, when I flick the switch, initially, as it heats up, it's emitting in the infrared. I can't see those wavelengths. But as it gets hotter, the wavelengths that it emits at become shorter. Therefore, they go into the visible range. So if I were to draw a graph showing the different wavelengths and the intensities at which they're being emitted for a black body radiator, and a black body radiator is just a perfect absorber and emitter of thermal radiation. Then here we can see for a temperature of 2000 Kelvin, I get this lovely curve and we call this a black body radiation curve. So I'm getting a range of wavelengths over which I'm emitting and I can draw a line at this peak wavelength here. That there is my lambda max and that is important to use in future equations. So what would that curve look like if I increase the temperature? Well, I need to think what's the relationship between temperature and energy. As I increase the temperature, there'll be more energy in the system. And what's the relationship between energy and wavelength? Well, E is equal to HC over lambda. Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength. Or I could rephrase that by saying that energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength. As a result, I can see that if I increase the temperature of my black body emitter, then what is going to happen is I'm going to get that peak wavelength shifting to a shorter and shorter wavelength. Now we see this exact process taking place with stars. And so, 
if we plot the black body radiation curves for stars, this is what we find. Red stars have got less energy, they're cooler stars, therefore the peak wavelength that they emit at is going to be longer. Yellow stars are a bit warmer, and therefore their peak wavelength is going to be in the yellow part of the spectrum. And blue stars are much, much hotter, therefore they peak in the blue part. You're expected to be able to reproduce these graphs in the exam and be able to suggest what would happen as the temperature is increased or decreased. So the key thing to remember is that as you get to higher temperatures, this peak region becomes more narrow. So now we're on to the actual classification of stars. Now it's a bit of an old system that dates back to stars being named before we entirely understood things, but there are seven classes of stars. The hottest is an O-class star, that then goes to B, A, F, G, which is what the Sun is an example of, K, and finally the coolest, reddest stars are M-class stars. Now there are lots of different mnemonics that you can use to remember the order of these. Uh, the classic old school one was, oh be a fine guy or girl, kiss me. I do recommend that you have a go at coming up with your own, it'll make it stick in your head better. But you are expected to be able to rank the different stars by their colour and name their classifications. And so we can see here, here we have the hottest, with our blue stars, and here we have the coolest with our red stars. And again, that temperature is relating directly to the peak wavelength being emitted. So looking beyond just the colour then, if we start to look at the absorption spectra of different stars, we see an interesting trend reveal itself. Remember an absorption spectra is shown by characteristic dark lines on the continuous spectra that show certain wavelengths of visible light that have been absorbed by a gas or by an object. So here at the top we have our hotter O-class star and we can see that there's a few prominent absorption lines on that but there's really not very many. And these prominent absorption lines can be seen all the way down the list of stars. But what's interesting is that as we get towards our cooler stars, we start to see the appearance of many, many more absorption lines. Cooler stars have more stuff in them, or a greater variety of things to find. And so one of the things you're expected to be able to do for the exam is to list the colour, the temperature and the prominent absorption lines that you can see. So here's a simplified version of what we saw in that previous slide. Our O-class stars are blue and their temperature range is 25,000 to 50,000 Kelvin. You are expected to be able to t say what the temperature of the different colour stars is I recommend that you just remember this lower bound and then in future you just put the lowest number at the beginning and that will go up to whatever the next lowest number is. You'll see as we go along. So O-class stars are blue, they have the highest temperature and the main absorption lines we see here are of course hydrogen and helium, that's what the fuel of a star is, but we see helium plus ions. That is ionised helium where electrons have been stripped away. There's so much energy that the helium exists largely in an excited or ionised state. Our B-class stars are also blue but at a lower temperature and there we see less of this ionised helium. We see mainly just the helium and the hydrogen. Our A-class stars are starting to get cooler now we get a very strong hydrogen line 
but then we do start to get some ionized metals. So we start to see things like calcium, um, which in astronomical terms is definitely what we would call a metal. And those ionized metals have had electrons stripped off of them again due to the high temperature, but the A-class star is cool enough for more complex or larger uh, atoms to have started to form. Then we go down to our F-class stars, which are white, and they are mainly ionized metals. Then in our G-class star, we see ionized metals, and then we start to see some neutral metals. We're now getting down to a temperature where the electrons are not being stripped away. Go to our K-class stars, we get mainly neutral metals, all the way down to our M-class stars, where we get neutral atoms and things like titanium oxide. So we start to see compounds being formed, or we start to see more complex things. The lower the temperature, the more stuff there is in the absorption lines of our stars. But we can then go one step further and we can use a very special set of spectral fingerprints to help us identify our stars. Now when we look at the surface of a star, we're seeing the emissions from the photosphere, the visible part of that star. And if you think about our hydrogen uh, within the star, Electrons in the n equals 2 state are already excited. Okay, so only the hottest stars can have electrons that are already excited to the n equals 2 energy level. As certain wavelengths of light are absorbed by that electron, it can gain energy, and when it, it's, uh, when it encounters a photon that has just the right energy for that energy level difference, it will be excited. Now, because it's absorbed that energy, we get a distinctive dark line on our continuous spectra. Of course, if the photon it absorbed had just the right amount of energy to go up two energy levels, that energy is greater, and therefore our wavelength is going to be shorter of the light that's absorbed. Three energy levels, shorter once again, even more energy, and then all the way up to the sixth energy level, and we get another dark line. These absorption lines are called hydrogen Balmer absorption lines, and they are caused by transitions from the n equals 2 already excited state. We only see these in the hottest of stars, O, B, and A, because they're the only ones with the temperature necessary for that hydrogen to be able to exist in an excited state, and they are more prominent in O-class stars than in A-class stars, because there's more already excited uh, hydrogen. The reason this is really useful from an astronomy standpoint is that they correspond to visible wavelengths, so we can see these absorption lines when using a visible telescope, an optical telescope. You are expected to be able to describe this process. You're expected to be able to explain what hydrogen Balmer absorption lines are and to link them to the hottest three classes of stars. And so that is the basics of classifying stars. We need to be familiar with the black body radiation curves. We need to know that the peak of that curve is what we call lambda max. We need to know the effect of temperature will cause, well, higher temperature will cause that peak to shift to shorter wavelengths and will cause a more narrow peak. You're expected to be able to remember that, well, this table, basically, all of the different uh, parts of the classifications, and you're expected to be able to describe and allocate the hydrogen Balmer absorption lines to the top three classifications of stars. All right, folks, if you've got any questions, please email me or get in touch on Teams, 
and 